Welcome to the introduction to advanced performance management paper. My name is Steve again. Firstly, the exam is 195 minutes, so which means 3 hours 15 minutes in total. And 100 marks in total 50 will be the passing mark. So the 100 marks will be divided into 80 technical marks and 20, I would say, these are called professional marks or very subjective marks. So making sure that your answer looks sensible, okay? So you will need to demonstrate your commercial acumen skills all the time in all questions in the APM paper in order to score these marks. Now, from my perspective though, it's very, very important that you notice that the time management, okay? I'll take you through firstly about the time management before we dip into the uh, professional skills using my uh, experience here. Now, it's very, very important that you need to allocate time to plan the requirement, okay? So, um, if you were to use the 15 minutes to read the requirements and to plan your answer, yes, that would be a good starting point, especially for the question one. So if that's the case then, the uh, number of minutes to be allocated to each mark will be 180 minutes, and to divide this into not 100 marks any longer, but it's just to be 80 technical marks. You will be allocating 2.25 minutes per mark Okay, so making sure that you plan your time using a deadline. So for example, if the requirement is for 10 marks, so we need to times by 10, we need to allocate 22.5 or 22 minutes to this particular requirement. So uh, making sure that you plan the time, the duration, the deadline. So for example, if you, uh, the clock clocks down, from 180 minutes after you utilize the first 15 minutes of reading time, so minus 22, and that becomes 168 minutes. Okay, when the clock clocks down to 168, you just stop and move on to the next requirement. Right, that would be a very good starting point there. Now, as I said to you before, there will be professional marks, but before we dip into that, Let's see the exam itself. The exam contains three questions. Section A, just to be a 50 marker question. Section B, 225 marker question. So in other words, 50 plus 50, and that would be 100. Now, within the section A, 50 marks will be divided into 40 technical and 10 professional marks. In a section B, in each question, there will be five professional marks for the question two and for the question three. So for example, the question two will be 20 technical marks and five professional marks. Question three will be 20 technical marks and five professional marks again. Now, all these questions are compulsory. You have to do them all. You can't miss any requirement, otherwise you will fail. Highly likely that students will fail if certain requirements are missing. Now, the examiner has focused on the elements that may be tested in the section A. I would say that except for these, any other syllabus areas will be tested okay, in the section A on a random basis. Again, in the section A, all four professional skills will be tested. However, in the section B, the examiner has said that either question two or question three will be the area from the syllabus area D, which means the balance scorecards, performance pyramids, building blocks, ABM, VBM, and the problems in planning and so on, and also the uh, the complex business structures. So one of these questions will be coming from these areas. Okay, very important. Another question, of, of course, will be any areas 
in the syllabus on a random basis. Now, in the section B, here, the, there might be minimum of two skills, okay, uh, would be examined in the section B as the professional skill. So, except for the communication skill that will be tested in the question one, the communication skill will never be tested in the section B questions any longer. So, the professional skills, as I said, the professional skills marks will be quite subjective. It can be analysis and evaluation, skepticism, commercial acumen, and also the communication skills. Now, all the questions, the analysis and evaluation will be tested, but what is it? Now, as I said before, there will be one, two, three, four professional marks. Now, these marks will be total at 20, okay, in the entire APM paper. Firstly, let's talk about the communication skill. Now, in the question one, you will always be asked to draft a report, making sure that you've got the report title, and then two from day subject, introduction, content, and finally the conclusion, making sure that the format style is correct. Now, at the same time, you will need to watch out the language. It's very, very important that uh, you use the active voice rather than the passive voice uh, in, in, in most circumstances. So, uh, instead of saying that uh, the KPIs will be dealt with in the report, I'm saying that the report will address the KPI issue, okay? So, the focus on the report, so for example there. Yes, sometimes we can use the passive voice, for example, the KPIs uh, are important and, and KPIs are recommended, but this would be fine. But uh, as the introduction paragraph, I would say that the language, I would use the active voice. And also, for clarity reason, please do use simple language, okay? Uh, so instead of giving uh, uh, a lot of uh, other dragons and uh, other non-business language, but uh, or using metaphors, for example, I will simply use the simple language, simple sentence for each point that I would make in the exam. Now, the criteria for communication mark, another element would be the effectiveness. So making sure that each of your points will be connected with the case scenario. That's very important. I will tell you how in a second. Also, you will need to address the key point. So, for example, that the examiner said in the part one, okay, although you are required to evaluate the performance report given by a client's company, but a client's company may have specifically listed four objectives to be dealt with, so in this report, so making sure that you will be telling the examiner, I have read this, and for the objective number one, two, three, and four, okay, so I need to show, I need to demonstrate my analysis and insight of how to do this, okay, so making sure that you address the key point, so for communication marks. Now, the example I've taken from the specimen paper, as you can see, the format of the report, two from date, subject, the date, you can simply say that that would be the exam date. Uh, the subject, I would like to copy the keywords from different requirement, okay, and using comma and and in the end to link all the keywords requirements all together as my heading. Uh, as, my, as, as my subject there. At the same time, as the intro, okay, the introduction of what you are go going to de be dealing with, okay, and then saying to the examiner, right, firstly, this is the first requirement, 
And secondly, this is the second requirement, making sure they label it as the second requirement, and so on. And this is the third requirement, okay, bold it, in other words. And for each point that you've made, please do make sure that you leave a line, okay, so to get these communication marks. In the end, you will need to give a conclusion paragraph as well. Now, let's move on to the second professional skill, which is the analysis and evaluation. So, um, when I talk about the analysis and evaluation, it's unlike in other uh, optional papers. So, for example, the AFM or the AAA paper. So, these are not really the same. Now, APM paper not only requires you to calculate numbers, but more importantly, you need to know the reasons behind these numbers and the implications that these numbers may have onto the business, which means you are able to interpret them properly. So to do this, I have my own framework okay, to gain these marks, but uh, the best way to do this is to have a go at this simple example. I will take this example later on when we apply the commercial acumen and the skepticism of marks based on this scenario. But firstly, let's see the analysis and evaluation skill based on this scenario there. So the scenario says it's the manufacturing company, okay, so the raw material costs and so on would be very important in there. But it has experienced declining profit. Yes, that's absolutely normal there, okay, because manufacturing companies may be facing with lots of uh, competition in the marketplace. Now, the CEO said that this may be because of the increase in production costs, so possibly the increase in labour costs or possibly the overhead expenses. While the production manager believes it's due to outdated machinery, it's that could be one of the reasons for that. So, for example, leading to the idle time, leading to uh, the machine breakdown and leading to the unexpected inefficiency costs, for example, the waste and so on. So this will contribute to the increase in costs as a result. And the company's board is considering adopting a new performance management model to deal with these issues. Yes, absolutely fine though. Now, how can we demonstrate that we've got the analysis and the evaluation skill? Firstly, make sure that you use the data to calculate numbers. So, for example, you said profit are declining, and you will need to divide this into, for example, the sales revenue increase or decrease, and also production cost increase and decrease. You're able to calculate them properly. Now, another stuff is all about the data interpretation. Very important indeed, you need to interpret the numbers correctly. So, for example, the production data from the past six months indicates a decrease in output. However, the labour hours are uh, quite stable during this time. Uh, this may suggest the fact that the machinery efficiency yeah, would be a concern because we're using the same amount of labour. However, the output decreases. Yes, it's not efficient. Okay, so it interprets the numbers, uh, not just from the financial part, but also from the non-financial part. And then you draw a conclusion for that. Okay, so for example, uh, because the external market quite stable, there might be internal challenges, and both of these may be, de may be contributing to the decline profit. Okay, so using the numbers, not just to calculate them, but to interpret them and be able to draw your conclusion of who is right, is to comment on those, that's very important there. Not only for that, but also you need to demonstrate your balanced appraisal view. So, for example, you need to say the reasons behind it. 
So for example, how about for machinery age? You said the machine is not efficient. So how old it is? The external factors, for example, where not the market demand is increasing or decreasing. And therefore, decreasing the output from your current machine. And you need to demonstrate that you've got the ability to make your own decision. So for example, addressing the immediate machinery concerns if the machine breaks down, for example. But also, you need to look out for any particular new ways to improve or to optimize your production cost. So for example, you may be, you may be thinking about to outsource your production to a third party company. So for example, based in Vietnam, and Africa, and so on. So the balance the price of will be very, very important there. Okay, so looking out for the reasons behind it and being able to make your decisions, very important to demonstrate that into your point. Another element within the analysis evaluation scale is all about using the scenario information. That's very important there. So for example, you may be using the contextual example taken directly from the case. So for example, uh, perhaps the production manager highlighted a machine has been malfunctioning quite frequently. If this machine is responsible for a significant proportion of the production, the inefficiency would be the primary contributor to the overall decline. So you take this information, okay, this machine is not good, it accounts for the majority of our production, okay, I'm going to shut it down or we're going to be replacing it. Not only for that, you also need to demonstrate your comprehensive evaluation as well. So for example, not only you will need to consider the potential efficiency gains, okay, so when you are using the new model, but also how you're going to be transit from the new model, uh, from the old model to the new one. There might be transition costs, there might be resistance from the internal employee, perhaps because of the increase in the efficiency, you need to sack your employee, make your employee redundant. So if that's the case then, that leaves us to the ethical considerations that we always need to discuss about in the APM paper. Now, the next professional skill is skepticism. Well, I'm sure that you're quite familiar with the skepticism skill in other professional qualification uh, papers. For example, the, uh, the SBL and also in other uh, optional papers in the ACCA. However, the skepticism is a bit different in the APM compared to other papers. Using the same scenario there, so how can we demonstrate that we've got the skepticism marks? Firstly, you need to have the ability to challenge the information appropriately. So for example, there might be contradictory evidence given by the examiner. So for example, if it says, yes, we've got the financial data, it shows that production costs remained quite stable. So if, if that's the case, then you should challenge the CEO's claims. So I would say that the stable production costs contradict with what CEO has suggested. So for example, the financial data from past year indicates stable production costs contradicting the CEO's assertion or the view from the CEO. Yes, if you bring that into your point, congratulations. Yes, you can score the skepticism marks. But at the same time, you always need to question the assumptions made by the management. So for example, we may be assuming a linear relationship between the machinery age and the productivity. Because the machine is quite old, it's not efficient, that makes sense. However, that doesn't make sense if the market demand, if the external customer demand, the customer's taste actually changes. So very, very important there, 
we always need to look out for any clues from the external market that we are not quite efficient, we are not producing many items as possible, such as what we've done in the past. Is it because our machine is quite old? Well, the answer may be no. Maybe the customer does not like our product any longer. So you need to question that assumption. Don't just to assume that there will be a linear relationship between A and B okay, in the APM paper. Now, another element within the skepticism is being able to challenge the management in a polite way. So, for example, the production manager's decision may be not to invest in the newer machinery. Okay, now, you need to tell the examiner that this decision, whether or not it is based on a recent feasibility study. Have you done the feasibility study for the uh, newer machinery in terms of cost and benefit, in terms of whether or not it is technically feasible, and so on. If this is not the case, you've not done the feasibility study before, so how can you stop investing in a newer machinery? That needs to be questioned here. Now, you also need to challenge the data accuracy as well. There might be limitations in the measurement, so for example, Maybe you are provided with the KPIs, but heavily focusing on the production output. However, you're not focusing on the quality aspect at all. So if that's the case, then I wouldn't say that we are not quite efficient, yeah, because our output is decreasing. But how about from a quality point of view? There might be lots of internal failure costs that the product gets damaged, before it's dispatched to a final customer, whether or not there'll be fraudulent transactions inside, and so on, whether or not the data will be accurate, the KPIs will be reasonable. You need to have the ability to challenge them. There might be any missing information as well. So for example, in your case, that the competitor information related to its performance or the overall market trend are missing. You can't see them anywhere else in this scenario. So if that's the case then, you have no idea where our company position is, and therefore the data might not be quite accurate. Because you are saying that we are not efficient, you are saying that our profit decline, we are terrible, however, we may be still outperforming than our competitors. So if that's the case then, we're still a good company, aren't we? Right, now, having the ability to challenge the metrics or the KPIs of properties will be very important. So let's say, let's see an example. Let's say the return on capital employed figure, which means you take the operating profit and to divide this into the capital employed, is quite positive. However, Using the ROCKE or the ROC return capital employees to measure the performance of a business may not be enough at all. So, for example, how about considering the net profit margin, asset turnover, to see the real picture of a business, the speed that the business is selling goods or providing services by looking at the asset turnover figure. Alternatively, look at its ability to turn the revenue into cash or turn the revenue into profit in the end, or net profit margin, for example. Break this down, okay? So make sure that you always challenge whether or not the KPI will be appropriate there. Now, another element within the skepticism is that how about the potential pitfalls? So always look out for any clues for limitation and challenges, and if you're questioning, uh, talking about, for example, using the economic value added model or the EVA model to do the number crunching exercises, or the ROI, return on investment, or the residual income RI calculations, always bring 
the disadvantages into your answer. So, for example. Now, having the ability to challenge the stakeholder will be also very important. So, let's uh, have a look at the example. Let's say the stakeholders believe that new machinery will lead to profit growth, okay, because the shareholder in particular wants you to invest money into the newer production line. So they would expect the substantial increase in the share price in the short term and being able to realize their investment. So you need to be objective in this case. You're saying that their assumption may be too simplistic, okay, optimistic in other words. So we also need to consider other factors as well. So challenge the stakeholder claims will be very important from this exam's point of view. Now, another element within the skepticism is that, okay, how about the reasoning behind challenges? So, for example, before challenging the CEOs, uh, the CEO says that production costs have been increasing all the time. It's very important that you notice the cost component within the, so for example, the materials, labour, and other expenses. That's one way that you can classify costs. Another way to classify costs is whether or not these costs are variable or fixed. Okay? So you are saying that okay, the costs are increasing, so whether or not the short-term variable costs or the longer-term fixed costs are increasing. So you need to uh, demonstrate your insight to the examiner. Finally, very important, you need to make an informed decision. So, for example, maybe it's more prudent to focus on the machinery maintenance and the employee's training in the short term to increase the productivity and also considering other long-term goals. So, for example, whether or not we will be replacing the machinery and whether or not we can meet with the long-term target so making sure making such decisions on the objective manner will be very important to demonstrate that you've got the professional judgment so you can score the skepticism mark. I would say that this is not particularly easy enough, but using my own framework here, you will score really well in the APM. Now, the final professional skill is the commercial acumen. Now, commercial acumen says it's not just the book knowledge that you've taken from your traditional study tests. The notes that I developed for you is very, very practical. And you can surely pass this paper very easily with lots of practical insight from my note. Okay, I wrote this note with my own experience not just from the exam's point of view, but from a practical point of view. Now, the examiner expects you to do the same thing. So in other words, they expect you to make sure that your answer is commercially sensible. So which means you really understand the real world situations. That does not necessarily mean so you have to bring the real company into your answer. This is not what the examiner is expecting you to do that. But the examiner expects you to make very similar decisions as the real life company management when they are making their decisions. So making very sensible recommendations and decisions will be very key to score the commercial acumen mark. Now, looking at the example again, using my framework of how to score the commercial acumen mark, firstly, you will need to look out for whether or not you've got the ability to make the recommendation on a practical basis. So, for example, not just from the contextual understanding, but also from the recommendation feasibility point of view. Let's say, that from a contextual point of view, okay, we are in the manufacturing centre. It's very important that we consider the industry standard because our products are quite standardised, in other words. Updating the machinery is very, very important, okay, rather than simply adopting the performance model 
and to, uh, and to look at uh, from each data's point of view. But it's more important to update directly our machinery because our products are quite standardized. However, we also need to balance our view with where not this is feasible. For example, replacing all of the machineries uh, will require a lot of cash to be invested in the short term. Where not we've got enough cash, enough liquidity, that could be a problem. There might be a phased approach, uh, could be adopted. So for example, we replace this area first for all the machineries in this area before the B area and before the next area. Now, using a scenario information, that's very important. Considering the internal and external limitations or constraints onto your business, very important there. So for example, there might be additional industry regulations coming in. So if that's the case then, okay, is intelligent advice for us to update the machinery now and then we come to the next stage that the new law comes and then we meet with the laws and regulation requirements. And also question the assumptions but it will be very important. So for example, if our company's growth strategy assumes that we need to have the stable production costs, we will need to think about ways to deal with the global raw material prices increases, for example, the oil price increases, not just from the machine's point of view, but also you are able to see the bigger picture, so for example, what costs actually mean. You'll also be able to uh, recognize the consequences or the impact from a past action and also having the future impl uh, implication to your business. So for example, in the past, we did not invest in machinery at all, but that was correct because in the past, economic downturn. However, if we continue to do this in the future, we may not be able to compete with our competitors uh, later on. Now, you also need to demonstrate your commercial understanding, very important there. So for example, you need to look at what is the problem so far, which means what is the issue that you're facing so far. Let's say that reducing costs alone, does it really help with improving our efficiency? But the answer for that is maybe the answer is no. Okay, it's very, very important from a longer term point of view. We need to set up appropriate KPIs and having a robust system to make sure that all these bits and pieces fit into with each other and make sure that it actually work in a longer term point of view. And also considering ethics, very important because as I said before, you may be required to make your employees redundant. So whether or not you'll pay them the redundancy fees above the average, above what the regulation requires you to do. So uh, you always need to consider into that okay, in the exam. I would say that these professional marks are quite different from what you may have already seen in other papers, in the P-level papers, for example, SP-level papers in the ACCA. But making sure that you're absolutely familiar with these four professional marks, let's recap on that. The second mark will certainly be tested in every question in the APM. The first skill will be tested only in the question one. And for question two and question three, the minimum of two professional skills will be tested. So for example, in question two, the exam may say, okay, I'd like to test you certainly for the number two analysis and evaluation skill professional marks. Sometimes, okay, the third one and also the fourth one. But sometimes, okay, the second one and the third one only or fourth one, okay. Same applies to question three. And make sure that you're ready for that. Now, the examiner, the examining team, I would say, in the APM has given you certain general guidance. 
So instead of simply plotting all of your points into your report, into your answer, it's very important that firstly, you will need to prioritize the most important ones. So considering the impact and the likelihood that it may take place, very important to bring that on top in your answer. Demonstrate your deep understanding rather than just quoting from the theories that you've learned in the past. And avoid irrelevant information, avoiding any dragons, for example, the metaphors and so on. But making sure to deal with the claims and the requests by different management team members on a professional manner. Very, very important. So, for example, uh, making sure that this report looks quite formal and to address all the issues asked by the examiner. Any irrelevant information, so for example, you're asked about the uh, business process re-engineering, for example, uh, requiring you to use IT and to completely change your systems in your business, and at the same time, you're talking about the MPV. So if, 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 if that's the case, then the information is not relevant at all, and you will get no marks, and even to reduce the number of your professional marks in the APM paper. So make sure that you're ready for that. Okay, the final word okay, for the introduction to the APM paper is that when markers are marking your script, reading your answer, looking at your answer for, for the very first time, the marker knows exactly whether or not your answer looks professional or not. It's just to be based on the pure judgment, okay? The feeling that whether or not the answer looks professional. So making sure that avoiding irrelevant information, making sure you always focus on the requirement asked by the examiner, always position yourself as the top management team members in this paper will surely help to score you quality marks in the APM paper. Right, that's enough for the introduction to the APM exam and I look forward to seeing you in the next of our chapter uh, where we are going to be focusing on the strategic issues relevant to the APM paper. And I look forward to seeing you then. Bye-bye. APC, accounting for your future.